Well, welcome. Uh, if you're here with us or joining us online for the first time, my, my name is Justin, and uh, you will maybe have noticed uh, running around, we have some kids that are dressed like superheroes. Uh, we uh, wanted to just celebrate kids getting back to, go- to school, and so we had them dressed like superheroes. But even if you're online uh, and you want to dress like a superhero, we'd love to see the picture. In fact, uh, and, and we'd like to just collect all the pictures, even of your kids dressed like superheroes, because it's fun, right? And even if you're an adult, you can do this, okay? You don't have to, though, but if you want to. Um, But we are right now in the last week of our series on prayers God always says yes to. And the reason we uh, dove into this series is because of this idea that, you know, I think when it comes to prayer, a lot of us have experienced some frustration. And, And it's true in prayer as it is in other things. If you set out to do something and it really doesn't accomplish any results, you kind of stop doing it. And sometimes when we pray, if we feel like it's just bouncing off a wall or if it's not accomplishing anything, we just stop doing it. But what if there was a way that you could pray that you knew God would say yes? If you knew that there would be results. And we started out looking at this verse. It says this, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. And this is Jesus, and he was pointing us to understand that prayer is something to be done inside of a relationship. And so often when we approach prayers with God, sometimes we do it in such a way that we just ignore this. But we would never do this with other people. And we said this statement. We said, requests outside of a relationship lead to resentment. But requests made inside of a relationship, they lead to results. And we see this is true in other relationships. If, you know, if somebody is just asking you for things all the time, but you don't have a relationship with them, it's going to lead to res- some resentment. And it just doesn't work out. But when you make requests inside of a relationship, that's different. And the same is true with God. And last week, Dermot, he dove in this a little bit further, and we talked about kind of joining alongside God in his work. And when you pray to, to be a part of his work, and you pray for, to be a worker and for more workers, he always says yes. And today, the the scripture that we're going to look at and the topic we're going to look at today is that when you pray for wisdom, God's answer is always yes. And the reason I know that is from this passage of scripture. It's in James 1, 5, and this is what it says. It says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. It says he gives to all, and he says if you ask for wisdom, the answer is always, always yes. And, and Dermot mentioned this last week, but you know, sometimes when we think about this idea, it almost comes across as maybe like a little presumptuous, like to think that, oh, you know, if I just do this, this, and this, then God's going to answer my prayer. And, and sometimes we hear things like this, and we just like skip right to that. And sometimes even when we look at a passage like this, we don't really notice that it doesn't say knowledge here, right? It says wisdom. See, knowledge and wisdom are not the same thing. Wisdom, I'm going to give you just a real simple definition. Wisdom is knowledge correctly applied. Knowledge correctly applied. And biblically speaking, and even if you don't believe in the Bible, you can kind of see that this is true, that when knowledge is correctly applied, it always looks like love. That's what it looks like. There's a a verse in Corinthians that says this, knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. And isn't that true? Have you ever known anybody that's just puffed up with knowledge, but it really isn't applied in such a way that it helps anyone other than themselves? And that's not what we're talking about in this verse. That's, God isn't just going to like open it up and just pour an encyclopedia of knowledge into you if you ask him for, hey God, I want some knowledge in this area. But he will do that with wisdom. And that makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? I mean, if one of your kids came up to you and said, hey, I would love to know how to love better, (laughs) would you answer yes to that? Of course. And the same is true of God. When you ask for wisdom, he gives generously to all without finding fault. If you have your Bibles with you, underline that first one, without finding fault. Because this, man, for me, this is good news. Because I don't know about for you, but sometimes when I start to pray, I don't know why, but I just start thinking of all of my faults and all the reasons why I think God would not answer yes to a prayer like this. But this clearly says God, he does not find faults when it comes to this. And and that's hard for me to get because I don't always give that way, right? In fact, rarely will I ever give something to somebody if I feel like they're just going to waste it. 
right? If they're not going to use it, if I think they have some faults in their life that make it to where I'm just not going to give that to them. But this verse says that even if you're not going to use it, God's still going to offer it to you. And he does it not to just one person or a few people. It says to all without finding fault. And it will be given to you. But it, it also says at the beginning of this verse something else. It says, if. And a few weeks ago, I reminded you, when you are reading through the Bible and you see an if, just circle it, underline it straight away, because it's important. It says this, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God. The big if here is if you lack wisdom. <laughs> Wait, is this talking about me? Do I lack wisdom? Or do you, do you lack wisdom? Do we, do we realize sometimes even where we lack wisdom? See, this is where we come into a struggle with this verse is oftentimes we don't experience an answer because we don't realize that we lack wisdom. And my goal today is for you to walk away and have this statement just stuck in your head. If you don't lack, you will not ask. And this is what this verse is saying. If you don't lack, you won't ask. If you don't realize you're lacking wisdom, you will never ask for it. And we all struggle with this. And I want to share with you Three different things that, that will help you see where you might struggle with and where I might struggle with realizing that we lack wisdom in hopes that we will all ask, okay? Because this is a prayer that God always says yes to. So the first one is this, and I, I want to illustrate this uh, by sharing a story with you. Last week, Dermot uh, shared a story about Spain, and I almost couldn't listen to anything else he said because I was like, man, that'd be fantastic right now. Um, I, I remember uh, a trip, it was a while back where Laura and I, we went to Palma, Mallorca, and, and I remember getting off of a flight, and there was just that wave of heat that hits you. Have you ever asked me? And I was just like, yes. I remember I had to like instantly take off and put on some shorts as soon as we got to our rental car. And we're in our rental car, and we are driving along because we have an Airbnb that we have to get to at a certain time. And I'm just enjoying the drive, you know. The sun is shining down. It's a beautiful place. We're driving along the coast. We get to, into the city. We're trying to find the place where our Airbnb is. And I am driving, and my wife, Laura, is navigating. She has a map, and she's looking at the map. We are not arriving at our destination. And I don't know if anyone else has this problem, but sometimes when I'm driving, it, like, brings out the most impatient part of me ever. And uh, we are not arriving at our destination, and I'm getting frustrated with her. I'm like, you have a map. Where are we? Where, why are we? Just A to B, how do we get there? But it's not working. And we're driving back and forth. We are not finding our spot. I'm like, okay, what could we be missing? I finally, I stop the car. I, I look at the map with her, and I realize what is going on. The, the, the roads in this town, they're like a rainbow, right? There's arches. And we, Laura, thinks we're on the outside arch when we're actually on the inside arch. The same roads are crossing both of these arches, so it's a simple mistake to make. But man, no matter how long we drove, we were never going to end up at our destination. And it wasn't until she realized that she was failing and we stopped to look at it that we realized what was going on. And it brings out a truth I think that is so important for all of us. It's this, that you don't know what you don't know until you fail. <laughs> you don't know what you don't know. I told that to a guy once and he responded to me, yes, I do. I'm like, no, you can't, you can't, right? You cannot know what you don't know. And we were driving along and Laura didn't realize that she didn't know. And we were never going to end up on our destination until we stopped and we looked and we asked the question. And it's so true in life, too, isn't it? Have you ever in life thought you were heading in a destination and you didn't end up there and you failed? Sometimes it's funny things. In this circumstance, Laura and I, we kind of like laughed about it. It was funny. But sometimes it's not funny. You know, sometimes we, we think we're headed somewhere in a relationship or we think we're headed somewhere maybe in a marriage or with a career and it results in a failure and it hurts. Have you ever been there? Have you experienced that? And when you experience that, how do you respond? See, because it hurts, oftentimes we just want to just get back on the road, <laughs> all right? But if you don't take the time to stop and look and learn from the failure, you could still be going the wrong direction. Or, or sometimes what we do is we blame. You ever done that? 
who are like, oh, I failed, but it's your fault. <laughs> and, and But when we do that, we can never learn from our failures. And so the first thing I want us to look at when it comes to lacking wisdom is this, that you learn from failures by asking for help. But in order to do that, you've got to stop <laughs> and you've got to learn. You've got to look at it, right? So we learn from our failures by asking for help. So now on to the second point, and some of you are, have realized, like, oh, that's very nice of you, Justin. Um, you're talking about uh, lacking wisdom, and you share a story about your wife. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, how does it work this way? It, and and maybe, maybe you're better than me, but for some reason, it's really easy for me uh, to remember and think about other people's failures. <laughs> In fact, I realized the more I thought about this that I actually spend time each week uh, looking through the news and looking through social media and spotting failures and thinking, wow, if they just did it this way. <laughs> you know, if, if, man, if we just made this little correction here, and I think it's a problem all of us have that we all love to be the source of wisdom. And the truth of the matter is, is the Bible tells us this is a, a, a struggle that we have that goes back to the very, very beginning. That, that at the beginning, Adam and Eve, right, they're in the garden. What do they do? They eat off the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And from that day, we've all had this temptation or this desire. We want to be this source of wisdom, even though we know deep down. And even if you're not a believer in God, you kind of feel this. We're just not. We are not the source of wisdom, but yet we live in a place that puts so much emphasis on that. And, and as I was preparing for this, I was reading through the Proverbs. I just pushed play on my phone and listened to it several times, and there was a proverb that just really stood out to me that I think adds some light in this topic, and it says this in Proverbs 18, 1 and 2. It says, whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound judgment. A fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. And the reason that stood out to me is because I think we live in such an age right now where, man, that is so highly valued, isn't it? Expressing your opinion. In fact, what was supposed to bring us together on social media oftentimes just becomes a platform to do what? Express your opinion. And we see it over and over again. And what was supposed to be something that brought us all together, actually for so many people, actually becomes something that just, people just end up more isolated. They end up not actually growing from being around others. It just doesn't, it doesn't work. We are not the source of wisdom. And, and the more that you find yourself as that source, the more isolated often you become. Leaders who, who they show up and like, oh, I'm the source of wisdom. Oftentimes, they have to keep that appearance going even though they know it's not true because we are not the source of wisdom. God is. That's what the Bible says. And if we want to realize or see where we lack, this is so key. Realize you are not the source of wisdom. You do it without even thinking. Realize you're not the source of wisdom and God is. That's the second one. Now, the third one is this. And uh, I think now it's time for me to share a story of my own foolishness. So here we go. This was some time ago. <laughs> All these disclaimers that you like to share when we stare at It's like, it was late. I was tired, okay? I was driving home uh, on a road that I was very familiar with because I drove it almost every single day. And unbeknownst to me, they had closed one of the roads that I would normally turn on to. But I was not paying attention and I didn't see the big, massive road close sign, big blinking lights until the last second. I slam on my brakes, but it's too late. But luckily, I don't just plow into it. I slam into this road close sign with my car, right? Now, uh, what do I do? First thing I do, without even thinking, I look around. Did anyone see me, <laughs> right? Whoa, did anyone? No. Oh, this huge sense of relief, right? Because I knew that I had just done something incredibly, incredibly foolish. And what do I do? I look around. I hope no one saw me. Whew, no one saw me. I throw it in reverse. I get back on the road, and off I go. And I didn't tell a soul. I'm like, I'm never going to tell anyone about this. Have you ever done anything foolish, and you've done the exact same thing? You look around, you're like, did anyone see it? <laughs> Or, or sometimes that when we do foolish things, we all have experienced that feeling, right? Like none of us like, we don't want to be seen as foolish. We're almost afraid of being seen as foolish. I mean, have you ever not asked a question because you were afraid you would look foolish? Even though you knew you didn't know, 
We've all done that, haven't we? See, we all have this inside of us. We're afraid to look foolish. We do it without even trying. It says this in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 3.8. It says, let no one deceive himself. Because we are all prone to deceive ourselves, right? If anyone among you thinks that he is wise in this age, anyone, let him become a fool that he may become wise. Let him become a fool that he may become wise. See, this is the path to wisdom. If you don't realize that you lack, you will not ask. And God is trying to get us to realize this so that we would have this, the courage to admit our foolishness. Our courage. And it takes courage because we're all afraid to look foolish, but we all are. Have the courage to admit your foolishness. This is the path to wisdom. And there's not another one. And you see this theme over and over and over and over in the Bible. God wants us to be able to recognize and admit and to confess, to speak out loud our foolishness, our weakness, where we lack in wisdom. In fact, in 1 John 1.9, it says this, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. It's another if there, right? if we just have the courage to admit it. And it's hard for every single one of us. But if we don't realize that we lack, we won't ask. And so those are the three things that we can put into practice. But can you imagine what this world would look like if more people put these things into practice? If they actually grew in wisdom. And not just knowledge, not knowledge that puffs up, but the kind of knowledge that when put into practice, it leads to love. That is what God is pointing to in this, this passage. In, in, in James, he describes it. It's 3.17. He says this, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is, first of all, pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere, what if more of our leaders did this and they put this into practice? And it wasn't about making yourself look wise, but you began to put this into practice in this way. It would change so much. It would change our churches. It would change our schools. It would change our communities. But in order for it to happen, you've got to realize that you lack and you've got to ask. Because if you don't lack, you won't ask. And so these are the three ways that you can put this into practice this week. The first one is this. Learn from your failure by asking for help. So here's how I want to challenge you to do that this week. I want you to take the time to stop and to think about an area in your life where you have been or have experienced failure, okay? And I want you to pray specifically for wisdom in that area. Pray specifically for wisdom in that area and see what answers God brings you. So that's the first application. The second one is this. Realize you're not the source of wisdom, and God is. The main way that I've been able to do or apply this in my life or figure this out is simply by reading God's Word. And so next week, we're going to kick off a new series on the book of Luke. And so I'd encourage all of you to just read the first four chapters of the book of Luke. So Matthew, Mark, Luke. It's the third gospel in the New Testament. Just read the first four chapters of that book in preparation for next week. And so this is the third way, is to have courage to admit your foolishness. So the way that really God wants us to live this out is in community with each other. And one of the reasons we do small groups is to give you and to give me and to give all of us a place where we can bring our questions, where we can bring some of this foolishness, these areas that we lack. The purpose of these groups isn't to just go answer all the right questions, it's so that we can grow together. And so if you're not in a group, sign up for one. And, and if you're online and uh, you, we have people watching, I know, from other countries. The great thing about our groups right now is we're doing all of them on, like, WhatsApp or uh, on basically video groups online. And so no matter where you're at, you can be a part of one of those. Uh, we're going to share a link to where you can sign up for one of those groups online. Uh, or if you're here, we have the sign-ups in the back after. So if you're not in a group, I'd love you guys to get in a group. And I'd love to see us all putting this into practice and asking God for wisdom. And let's see how we answer it and the results that come from that. Would you pray with me? God, thank you so much um, for your word that, that guides us and gives us direction. That we're able to see what we know deep down that, God, you are so much more wisdom than we have. 
And God, thank you for taking some of that pressure off that we don't have to be the source. And we can lean into you to be that source. And I just pray that you would free some people today from some wrong roads that they're walking down, that, that they would be able to gain wisdom that they don't have from you and that they would put it into practice in their life. God, I love you and I thank you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.